Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Voice of Rio. I'm Dr. David Lawrence, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm here with my co-host, Dr. Do Dr. Donna Mitchell. Welcome. Right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and we're excited to, that you have joined with us this afternoon. We've got a guest who's going to be speaking with us just for a few minutes here. Uh, but before we get started with that, we wanted to talk just a little bit about some of the things that have been going on this afternoon and earlier today uh, over in the School of Business. We've had some a lot of students over here, is that right? We have. It was so exciting. It was so much fun to be a part of. We had 230 students actually from seven schools in the area, and they came in for the AMA visit business visitation day today. There were teams and they competed. They had uh, a competition where they had to design this this uh, ad campaign for this band and they had to determine whether it was a rock band, a country band. We got to listen to them. They had about an hour and a half to prepare. They did an excellent job. They had PowerPoint presentations and so it, I got to be a part of it last year and this one was even bigger and I think maybe better than the year, year before. So we had high school students all over the campus and it was, a, it was a really fun day. Yeah, I noticed all the buses out in the parking lot. Um, and they've been doing that for quite a few years now, uh, both as a recruitment tool and also to introduce students to business processes and, right. and marketing and things like that. Um, and I understand that they, that's always gone very well and I'm, I'm glad to say that it went well today as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have a guest. He's a returning uh, uh, a Ryle alum from from uh, that's that's been here for a while. Um, he is his name is Dominic McAllister. Uh, welcome, Dominic. Glad to have you Thank with you us this morning, this afternoon. Um, as we begin, why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself? Okay, um, I'm actually I went to been uh, went to Rio Grande for my uh, business administration degree or business management first um, four years undergrad that I uh, came as a, a recruit for baseball under baseball scholarship under Brad Warnemont. Um, after that I uh, stayed on as an assistant coach, graduate assistant, and uh, got my uh, MBA here at, the, at uh, Rio Grande, which was a, a great program, relatively new at the time, and uh, you know it's helped me a lot uh, in my career now, and uh, you know I appreciate everything that uh, University of Rio Grande has given me. Great. Well, it's good that you're here. We, we're looking forward to spending some time talking with you and, and getting your input on a number of different things. Could you talk to us a little bit about your experience at Rio Grande? We just talked about the AMA and the, some of the projects they do, and I believe you are a member of the AMA. Yep. Um, uh, with Wes Taney, actually, uh, he was a very instrumental in my career, um, in my business career, and also uh, as a student. Um, you know that was that's a program that I'd advise you know any any high schooler to get involved in. Um, kind of opens your mind to the business aspect of uh, of school and uh, you know marketing something you're gonna have to market yourself in your career and uh, you know any business that you're a part of marketing is a vital part of its success. Um, you know my time at Rio was great. Uh, the business school teachers, you know a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction, a lot of relationships that I still have today. That's uh, part of the reason why uh, you know I'm here today is because of Pat. Pat was uh, inter instrumental. He's running behind the scenes right now, but uh, he uh, you know he was inter instrumental part of my business career here, and uh, kind of reached out to him and told him you know I'd love to help him out on the Voices of Rio and and also Strictly Business earlier today. So uh, it was, it's been excellent. Super. You were also an athlete, I believe, right? Yes, uh, I did play baseball here. How many years? Uh, well, for four years I played uh, baseball, uh, played multiple positions, but mostly first base, um, and then also coached the team uh, after that, which that's a lot of uh, life experience as well, uh, coaching, you know, your people that you know pretty well and just managing a team on a, you know, a smaller, smaller college level. There's a lot, of, a lot of things that go into it that may not be on a, on a bigger college level. Did you consider other colleges before you decided on Rio? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, being from Columbus, I you know obviously considered Ohio State and some other small colleges if I wanted to play athletics. Um, but you know, uh, you know the opportunity here to, to play a sport. You know, I'm a very competitive person. I enjoyed that, and then just uh, you know, I, I still I don't remember you know everything from my f six years here, but um, I I do remember my first time driving down and uh, just. Uh, the atmosphere, the the scenery. I mean, being from Columbus, uh, you know, 
there aren't that many hills there there isn't in the fall I mean it's absolutely gorgeous here too and I still live down here and appreciate that every day but um, you know that was one thing that one memory that sticks out to me as far as why I came here and then also it was the best decision I could make as far as uh, the one-on-one -on -one care I got the the personal relationships I got with my my professors too so it's been awesome it's definitely a smaller school, so you get more of a one-on-one -on -one experience and interaction with your faculty members. And sometimes I think that encourages students to uh, stay longer, maybe, and, and finish an MBA, as you did, and to uh, become more comfortable in the, in the environment, both in the dormitories and the extracurricular activities, et cetera. Absolutely. Uh, you know, being, being uh, you know, part of of this school and this community I mean like I said I'm still part of it I still see people that I know when I'm when I'm out in the community and uh, like I said I still talk to uh, you know the athletic director um, you know the my coaches Pat uh, Jason Winters is in the business uh, department I mean you know they're there they care about me now you know after the fact you know you can't I'm not just a number at maybe like a big college they they still uh, are interested in my success and my career and what I'm doing now. And like I said, that's why the, I try to take this take this opportunity to give back a little bit and um, you know come spend some time with Pat and uh, you know and just kind of advise any of the uh, you know students that are going to be going out into the real world and getting a real job and uh, you know a little bit of my my experience doing that. That's pretty special too that you're still at Rio Grande. Being a city boy, you came from Columbus, and apparently like Rio Grande's enough that you're still here after graduation. Yeah, uh, I don't know how often that that happens, but uh, you know, there's uh, it, it's definitely been the right decision for me. I tell people I get the best of both worlds because my parents still live up there. If I I want to spend some time in the city, but you know, this is my home right now, and uh, it's been for about eight or nine years, so. I don't plan on moving anytime soon. Hopefully I can do as much as I can for the community and for the, the school as well. Can you talk to us just a little bit about your experience here as an undergrad? Were there any, you've mentioned uh, quite a few of the professors and, and uh, Pat, uh, who's here in the studio with us today. Uh, were there some experiences that stand out that, that uh, you look back on and think, I was glad I was here for that? or something that made an impact on your life that, that you see now that you may not have not have understood the impact that it would had at the time? Yeah, um, I, I'd say one of the, the main experiences would actually relate to AMA. It was the first time I kind of, you know, I was busy with uh, baseball, of course, but uh, it was the first kind of extracurricular I got into um, outside of, of sports, you know, because, you know, you get caught up in the sports and it does require a lot of your time, but I remember making some sacrifices to be part of that with West Taney in the uh, marketing program and um, you know now that I'm in sales you know that that marketing aspect and uh, just the importance of it is you, you can't really quantify it and uh, I know working with him and he's another one of those professors that I mean you know I can go talk to him right now and it, it, you know it'd just be like you know almost like friends you know well after we definitely are friends now so that's that's a relationship thing that uh, that would definitely uh, be something that you would cherish from being here. Do you think you gained a different mindset going through the MBA program here? A different way of looking at maybe looking at the world and looking at future employment and and how you would pursue maybe the next phase of your life? Yeah, um, I. Uh, the good thing for me is, you know, I, I always had the the idea that I wanted to be in business. Um, you know, our our MBA programs uh, focus on entrepreneurship. So, I mean, even when I was little, I mean, I started with selling my baseball cards on eBay, and uh, you know, just just worked up from there. So I kind of had that focus set. But then when we got to the MBA program, and uh, we focused on building a, a business plan and uh, the marketing schemes and different things that you can do to to start your own business I mean uh, right now in the sales profession I consider myself my own business but eventually I'm gonna use those skills on a, on a higher level to uh, you know have my own business and and grow something from there were you involved in some of the games that Roger Watson does were you doing those games at the time oh absolutely actually I, I if you look back in the record books I, I did win the business challenge game uh, 
uh, the simulation mm -hmm. game for, mm -hmm. for Roger Watson. So hopefully I'm in the Rio record books for that. There you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was. Uh, I'm glad you you brought that up. That's a good memory I have of, of being here. And uh, yeah, I, I love Roger too. I f can't believe I forgot him. Mm -hmm. He's definitely important important part of my academic career here. So. I never cease to be amazed at how well those students do in those competitions. Seems like every week we're in the top 100, we're number 25, we're number 30, sometimes number one, number three. So it sounds like that's been a, a tradition for a number of years. I would advise uh, anyone uh, that, that's in the school business to take that class and, and uh, just go through that experience. It's definitely something that uh, you know, there's so many different factors that go into being successful in that simulation, and uh, the competitiveness as well. It, it was it was awesome. I, I, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> I actually got to sit in on some of the classes as he was running some of those sim simulations with the students, and listen to some of the companies that they had developed, and they were so creative, and some of their ideas were so out of the box that it was fun. In fact, it was one of those classes where I was actually there as an evaluator, I didn't want the class to end. I wanted to participate. I wanted to be part of that class. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something, uh, it's a, definitely a great experience and definitely taught me a lot about uh, how much goes into to running a business like that. So, uh, excellent, excellent experience. Yeah, there's a lot of thought to it that I wouldn't have even thought about. Some of the things you have to think about when you start your business and, and marketing and even placement of your, your um, different shelves and where you put something and what the, the customer sees as they walk in the door first and I'm sure those are all things that you deal with every day now. Yep, yep, absolutely. So uh, I understand that you're working uh, in management and in sales position. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm currently a, a sales manager at a Ford dealership in Chillicothe, Ohio. Um, you know, there's obviously a big business, big industry, um, and there's a lot of different aspects that go into managing, but it's just like business. Uh, anybody that's good business knows that it's a lot about people working with the public every day and uh, also managing uh, my sales staff as well. I mean, you know, you spend so much time with them that, you know, they're, it's almost like a, a athletic um, experience as well as far as being on a team, you know, sale, you're a sales team as well. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't like to look at myself as their boss, but more of like maybe like a quarterback on a team that's trying to guide them uh, to be successful and uh, teach them the skills they need to be successful and help out when, when the time, be right in the middle of the, uh, the sale with them as well. So, You're using a lot of sports metaphors here. and uh, My background is music and being a part of team is, is, is part of that as well, being a part of an ensemble. Uh, so that, that uh, experience that you gained as both a player and a coach, you mentioned you were doing some coaching as well. Uh, so you feel like that helped you in dealing with uh, people in general and then, and then specifically with a, a team that you have on your sales team? Yeah, um, anybody that uh, is going to be successful in life is going to have to be able to work with a team and you're always going to be more powerful and, and more successful uh, in a group. I mean, that's naturally that's how people are. Um, as far as to accomplish something great, no one ever does that by themselves. So uh, I, I would say I learned more as becoming a coach, uh, a graduate assistant coach, just realizing everyone's different. Everyone, uh, you know, needs different things out of their coach and different things motivate them. And that's something that directly uh, works with, you know, sales management as well. And uh, my team with me now, you know, well, you know, motivating somebody, you know, uh, positively or negatively, every person just needs that that right uh, mix in order to get the best out of them. I'm sure that in addition to learning about business, you learn learn some life skills, I would say, and sometimes we learn more life skills after we graduate than what we did during school, or maybe perhaps we begin to, to apply those life skills. Could you talk to us a little bit about life after college, going into the real world, as you say, and, and where you are with that? Yeah, um, like I was, I was talking to you before the show, um, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, uh, college is, you know, the, the, the hardest step of your life or, you know, you, you can't make it through the semester or things like that. Um, you know, there's a lot more uh, after college that, that it requires of you too 
that you learn over time. And uh, what I was telling you before is that, you know, you think that you're going to get your degree and you're going to get a master's degree. And then the next thing you know, your, your phone's ringing off the hook and everyone wants to hire you and give you the job you always dreamed of. And, uh, you know, it, uh, that's not how it worked for me. It was a little bit more interesting than that. Um, Obviously, I have people ask me, you know, if you, well, you have your MBA, why are you, why are you a sales manager at a dealership? Um, but you know, it was actually one of the best uh, growing experiences uh, of my life. Uh, there's probably about a six-month period from when I got my uh, master's degree and uh, actually getting employed at the dealership. Um, you know, I took different jobs uh, or different interviews, banking and um, some other, uh, you know internet opportunities and you know nothing was really working out for me uh, nothing uh, it wasn't as easy as I thought and uh, but then I, I uh, ended up just taking an open interview at a dealership they convinced me that the opportunity was there that if you worked really hard and uh, took care of your people and your customers that you would be successful and you'd be rewarded for that and um, actually you know the best best thing I could have ever done uh, I was the last person I ever thought would be in sales. I don't know if you can tell if I was if I seem a little nervous, but uh, I was definitely a lot more shy, um, you know, coming out of college. And I never thought I could, you know, ask someone to buy a car or work in sales or anything like that. I thought I'd be in a cubicle, uh, you know, maybe punching numbers or something. But uh, it worked out uh, amazing for me. And uh, you know, like I said, I work in Chillicothe. I still live down here, so I have that hour drive. Um, you know, every day, and you know, you think that that'd be uh, detrimental to me, but actually, uh, is has been a blessing in disguise. It's given me, uh, you know, a lot of time for self improvement, as far as uh, you know, a habit I've picked up, which you know, education at, at this at this level is is absolutely excellent, but education never stops. Um, it is uh, self improvement, and that uh, that eagerness to always get better is something you have to acquire if you want to be successful. And uh, you know, listening to you know, multi, you know, audio books on my ride up there about sales, about life, about motivation, and uh, all that kind of stuff is is just made me a better person overall. And uh, you know, like I said, it's not not how I plan, but you know, uh, a lot of people it won't be how you plan. But I definitely uh, think it would. It's it's worked out what's best for me right now. Did you have when you went into business, and then obviously the MBA? Did you have a specific? goal in mind or a specific uh, area that you wanted to go into? You, you mentioned possibility of sitting in a cubicle, <laughs> but uh, did you have something in mind? Um, you know, I, I still have in mind uh, entrepreneurship, um, owning my own business. I know that that's, you know, the typical what everyone uh, in business is looking to do, and that's a good goal to have. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, in my position, I feel like currently at the dealership, I feel like I have my own business. Um, and, you know, I just have uh, someone else paying for the inventory, but uh, I feel like my Ford store is my, is my own business. And, uh, you know, I market it the best I can through Facebook, through my friends, and through just treating my customers right to get that residual business back to me. But I, uh, I kind of do have my own business that uh, I don't have to pay for the inventory right now. And, uh, you know, hope eventually my goal will definitely be to, to start on my own venture uh, and, you know, from, from scratch. And that's what kind of what the MBA program here is specifically designed for. That's why it worked out perfect for me. I mean, uh, my goal is, is definitely to own my own business, uh, you know, start it from scratch and, uh, you know, just work hard every day to, to make it a success. And hopefully I can do it in this community and expand it around as well. Something that occurred to me as you were speaking, you talked about your experience, where you are now, your experience at Rio Grande, and it seems like everything really worked together to make you successful where you are. I think that, that you, you speak a lot of teams, and your experience as a, a baseball player and then a coach helped you to learn that the team, team concept and the coaching concept, which you do with your employees and which you will do from now on as you start your new business. So isn't it interesting how we wonder how all these things that we're doing, will they ever have an impact in us, on us in life? And suddenly they all gel together to, to make our next step a little bit easier. Absolutely. I, I, you know, you never, you never thought, you never think that, you know, maybe coaching for two years, you know, obviously I did it to get uh, my degree and I love baseball as well. But, I mean, that experience you get, you think, well, you know, I'm just trying to get my degree and get out. But that experience I got as coaching, 
probably taught me more than, you know, a lot of schooling that I've had over the, you know, 18, 20 years. Uh, just that, that experience with people, um, you know, different people and, uh, you know, how to interact with them, how to be responsible uh, when you're responsible for them, for their success, responsible to them and showing up every day and, uh, you know, being on time, being early. And, uh, you know, that responsibility that uh, that position and Coach Warnemont taught me uh, over the years and my past high school coaches, uh, that little segment of my life, not to tie everything to sports, but that's made me successful in my sales career because of uh, the responsibility involved and also, um, you know, the competitiveness involved in the industry. Obviously, you have to be competitive when you're working on a commission. Um, you know, it's not a job where you can, you know, just hang back and get get a paycheck so uh, it worked out perfect for me and like I said not at all how I expected but that's what I hope people can take from this is it doesn't have to be exactly how you expected but uh, you know it it works out for a reason being a being on a team it uh, really does give you that kind of experience in working with others and I like the way you said that being responsible to others uh, just reminding everybody that uh, just because you have that experience and you have that education, you still need to work with people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's a very difficult thing. I'm sure you've, you've had uh, experiences uh, in your current position where perhaps customers are not quite as, uh, uh, as friendly as you would like to see them be. Can, have you had some experiences you could share with us with that? Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, every time uh, in, in this position, we're, we're always overcoming the stereotype of uh, what a car salesperson does, what they're trying to do. It's very difficult going from being what I thought was a likable person, you know, to immediately every day when you go to work, they initially think that you, uh, you know, maybe aren't as, as good of a person or they don't know you for who you are and what you've done just uh, just the uh, stereotype of it so um, that's definitely hard to overcome um, but you know there's only one way to do it and that's just to, to show them you know you get an hour or two with them and you know if you're there to serve them and you have the right intention to help them um, they can feel that and they can understand that and uh, like I, I said in the strictly business you know it's it's might be subconscious it might be subliminal but uh, if your true intention is to help the customer, uh, they'll feel that and uh, th you'll be able to break through a lot sooner and then see you as a person and not as a salesperson. See you as a person there to help them, not a person there to take their money. So uh, that's definitely been uh, a huge part as well as what you were saying, which is responsible to others, um, the, the consistency, uh, you know, consistency is one other thing that goes with that is you have to do it every day you know and uh, it's not just a one day thing you show up and you're only responsible to somebody one day it's it's who can do it day after day after day that's such a good life skill to have and a lesson to learn ideally students will be learning that early on in their tenure here uh, if they haven't already developed that uh, because no matter what kind of a position you are in you're going to have to be working with people and uh, you've got to learn to get along with people and take responsibility for your own actions and, and hopefully being helpful for others. You mentioned that you were shy when you started school and that you wouldn't think that you would be where you are, you thought you would be in a cubicle. Did you have any public speaking classes or did you have any classes that helped you to be articulate because you, you do so well now and you meet the public every day can't be shy if you're selling cars. <laughs> no, uh, I, you know, I don't have any experience. This is probably my uh, first time being on camera, actually. But, uh, you know, it's just something you develop over time. Uh, you realize what what it takes uh, to be successful in what you're doing. And sometimes if, what uh, you know, what it takes uh, to get it done is, is less painful than what might happen up here. So, uh, you know, just something developed over time and, uh, you know, no, nothing professionally taught. <laughs> well, it's worked out well for you, I would I have to say. I appreciate it. Are there any parting thoughts that, as you think about your education at Raya Grand, anything that you could tell somebody else who's thinking, you know, I'm, I might want to go to school, I'm not quite sure, I don't know if Raya is right for me. What kinds of things should people think about as they explore whether or not they want to go back to school, and if so, whether Rio might be the right choice? Well, uh, I abs absolutely want to uh, promote schooling. Uh, you know, 
I, I wouldn't be in the position I am if I didn't go through the schooling and life experiences, uh, despite, you know, whatever you might pick up, um, you know, in your day-to-day -day life and your people's skills. Um, I, I know for a fact I wouldn't have had the opportunity to be promoted if I hadn't gone through the school, the professionalism, and like we've talked about before, the responsibility. Um, I like to tell people the being successful in school is showing that you are responsible and that you can take care of your business every day. And uh, if you can't, if you're not successful in school, then uh, you know it can translate into uh, life as well. If you're not able to take care of your studies and your grades and things like that, so um, you know I don't regret any decisions to be in school and uh, and to continue my education. And I definitely recommend here as well. Dominic, we appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for dropping by and sharing some of those experiences with you. Uh, we obviously wish you the very best as you continue on with, with your career, thank you. uh, both in, in your sales career and then when you start your own business. All right. Uh, we, we have a feeling that you will be successful, and we invite you to come back anytime and talk with our students, talk with us. Uh, it's always great to see Rio success stories that are out there. It actually makes me so proud to see our graduates and see what they're doing and hear them come back and talk about Rio Grande and then talk about the influence that Rio had and how it helped you get to where you are today and to help you helped you to meet not only the goals that you had at that time, the goals you may have now and your future goals as well. Absolutely, definitely prepared me 100%. Wonderful. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us this afternoon and we look forward to being back with you at another time in about a month. <laughs>